As a Christian, well, sometimes we need a reminder of who we really are. Because, you know, the, the, the greatest fallacy in the world is to not realize who you are and thinking everybody else is all messed up. Hallelujah. Everybody say amen to that. Yeah. But sometimes we're looking at other people and we see their flaws, but you know what you're really seeing? You see yourself magnified in another person when the reality is it's a funhouse mirror. It's actually you. You're the messed up one. And you're looking at this person and saying, look how messed up they are. And thereby you walk in judgment, you walk in pride, and you walk in unforgiveness. And all the while, all of this is showing your true character. Okay? See, don't look at other people. Look at yourself. Amen. Everybody say amen. I know you're getting quiet. Sound like you're getting scolded. But all it is is realization. That's all we've been preaching about the last three months is realization. Finding out who you are in Christ Jesus. Because religion is a funny thing. It always likes to magnify the most minuscule thing in somebody else. Right. All the while, the speck in the beam story that Jesus told is alive and well. We are the beam pointing out specks. Yep. Amen. If you're looking for perfect people, there are none. If you're looking for the perfect church, there is none. If you're looking at imperfection, you think you're perfect. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to look today, and um, we'll start off with Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, because you need to understand this verse. Um, some of you, I get to see you once in a while. For the ones that come all the time, they're going to say, oh, again? Exactly. You see how your mind is unrenewed because you said, again? Here we go. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, Paul writes, what does he say? Brethren. Who is he talking to? He's talking to church people. You know why church people think they're all that? That's right. They don't even the bag of chips. They're nothing. <laughs> you have nothing without Christ. If you are a person that always feels like everybody's against you and everybody wants to get one over on you, you gotta you gotta get a reality check. Yes. Amen. You know, I'm sick and tired, and I'm just saying that this is my rant, because I always have a rant or nine. Um <laughs> I don't like people that are flamboyant about their religion. That irritates me. That shows me that you are hiding the real you. Because you've got to be instant. The Bible says in season and out of season. You know what the season is? It's whatever's blowing around in your head. That's the only season that it's talking about. It's always about mindset. If you read this Bible from a correct standpoint, everything is about mindset. Amen? So don't have a set mind. Have a mind that is set on Jesus only. See, if you have a mind set on the things of the world, you're already religious. You see, if you are, when we get to the narrative, you see kind of where I'm at. Okay? So he's talking to church people. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And we know that your body will follow whatever your mind tells it to do. That's the bottom line. All right? Holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. How I many you know that your body will follow your mind? And the most reasonable thing you can do is be at peace with who God has created you to be. Amen. See, the number one turmoil in the world besides money is always about your own self-image. Your self-image sometimes relates to your inner character. Everybody say character. character. You see, if you're a person that is who you are and you don't phony baloney this thing, I mean, you know that people can count on you. Because they know the, the, they know the Christ in you, basically. If they got to look past your head and your words and your outer character to get to the Jesus, something's wrong. Because Ephesians 2, 6 says that you are seated in heavenly places in Christ. They're supposed to see and notice the Christ in you before they notice the you in you. Amen. Amen. All right. Verse 2, and do not, he says, do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now here's a little spin on this. If you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that means you are still having duality. You're still having a natural and a supernatural going on at the same time. You're having a flesh and a spirit battle all the time. If you take out the word world... We can replace that word world with religion. And don't be conformed to this religion. You guys cool with that? Yeah. Yeah. Because religion killed Jesus. Yes. 
Religion is a mindset that is untransformed. It is conformed. It is a spirit of conformity. It goes the way it thinks it should go. And how many know that that's not the way God wants you to go? See, God wants you to... See, everybody's thinking, well, i got to do what God tells me to do. That's fine. But how many know you're supposed to already know the will of God before you even set out on this venture? Amen. You don't go to the airport and wonder where you're going. <laughs> Amen? How many ever went and did something like that? Okay, you girls can relate to this. I talked about it before. You used to go to the Hello Kitty store and buy the mystery bag. You pay the twenty dollars. You don't know what's in there, right? I mean, no, you can't take your five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, go to the airport and say, "Just book me something. <laughs> Surprise me." <laughs> so this is how it works with God. He doesn't tell you to come into prayer and then you're supposed to be surprised at where God is taking you. You're supposed to already know the venture that you're on. Many of you came to Hilo and never know why. But here you are. I can tell you why. Because you're supposed to come meet this Lolo. <laughs> who's going to tell you that God already pre-planned. He predestined a lot of things. I mean, you know when it talks about predestination in Romans? That's God's best attempt, at you, uh, attempt to get you to realize he already had a predestination for you on this vacation on earth to come home. See, the predestination, everybody's talking about heaven or hell. No, no, no. The predestination is he already paid for all the sin. All you have to do is go walk in the victory and come home. Amen. That's right. Amen. See, we come here with a victorious mentality and attitude. And then our activated mindset that Adam had when he fell, I mean, uh, that ignites religion. You know what religion really is, okay? If you're paying attention to me today. Religion is this. It's trying to make a gardener, become a farmer, become a gardener. Not realizing that you already have the gardener, you had to come walk through Adam's penalty which is being a farmer and come back and realize you you were our gardener of the whole time. And you'll see that. Okay, let's go to the notes now so you can read my, my illustrious intro. <laughs> Alright. All right, religion. All right, everybody say religion. Religion. religion is a very tricky thing. In reality, all it is is a mind not focused on God, but on self. Mm. Well, you know that religion always focuses on self. It wants to be the loudest. Not just in voice. It wants to be the loudest in attitude. It wants to be the loudest in image. It wants to be noticed. It want, remember now, the religious establishment of Jesus' time always had to dress up with all this clothing to be seen. All the while hiding who they re really were underneath. And that's no different in today's church. A lot of people want to be seen. They want to be heard. How many of you know that if I really want to trust somebody, I want somebody who's not talking because I know they're listening. If i got to be heard because I have a problem, I'm not looking for somebody to talk me out of it. I'm looking for somebody to listen and love me through it. Amen. See, religion always wants to put on a show. Amen? Because that's why it's a very tricky thing. It's always focused on self. This self is a direct result of the fallen Adam with a gardener's mentality learning to be a farmer. And this is exactly what happened. Now, I talked about this Wednesday night. Adam was not punished, okay? So I want to repeat that today. God, God did not want to punish Adam, but Adam could not be in the presence of God with that mentality that got activated. So God's mercy was to put him outside of the garden until he could remedy the situation. The flame of fire which kept Adam out of the garden is the same flame of fire that sat on them in the book of Acts when the day of Pentecost came. You see, this is God's mercy. It wasn't God's penalty. We got it all wrong. We always think that God is out to punish us. No, His mercy tries to make amends for things that we screw up. 
See, don't ever think God is out to get you. He's out to get you back in him. Hallelujah. See, uh, here's the thing that irritates me. Is that there's so much going on in pulpits all over the world. Where people are, and I'll just say people, preachers, are condemning their sheep. Amen. They're not supposed to have to slaughter sheep anymore because Jesus was the lamb that was slain. We're not supposed to have to judge anyone anymore. The problem is religion always wants to calculate a penalty when there is no penalty to be paid anymore. It's all paid in full. You see, so if you're part of any religious church or maybe you're visiting me for the first time, I, I, I'll just be honest with you. Hell with that theology. To hell with that thing. You know why? It has no place where Christians exist now because Christ paid for all of it. Yes. So don't tell me about sin. If you talk to me about sin, I know you're hiding yourself. Yes. Alright, so it's a gardener's mentality learning to be a farmer. Here's the thing. God's mercy did this. When Adam and Eve did not take full responsibility for what God told them not to do, they were put out by God's mercy out into the world. What they had to do now was become the gods that Satan had told them that they would become. They had to go God their own universe and existence until God could meet them on the other side. I hope you get that. Amen. Because this is where religion gets stuck and caught up. They always think God is out to punish. So get out of here. Now you got to go farm the land. You got to go toil all that. But God's mercy, you see, we read it sometimes wrong. That's why I say we always got to be new detectives on an old case. Amen. We got to look at things with fresh eyes. We got to look at this cold case and say, how can I resurrect this thing and find out the solution? So we are the new detectives. Amen. Amen. So we, what does a detective do? Simple. It's found in the title, detect. What do we detect? Common sense. See, most people, Preachers don't have common sense. They're going with a nonsense, nonsensical attitude that was taught to them through tradition. So all you get is a repeat of years and years of screw-ups and bad thinking. Amen. We don't look at it with fresh eyes. So when I came into this thing, this is what God told me. He says, it's not all that it appears to be. And I was like, what do you mean by that? He said, when you look at things... Look at it through my grace and mercy. So that's all I've been doing. And people all over that are listening to these things out there like, Oh my God, where did you get this? It was there the whole time. It's just, I chose not to look at it through my five senses. I chose to look at it through my activated spiritual senses. Because God has blessed me with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus in Ephesians 1. Amen. So if you look at it through the Spirit's eyes... You won't look at it through your eyes trying to figure it out because, let me just share this with you. There's nothing to figure out. See, we're always trying to figure something out when it's already figured out. It's like looking at a Picasso on the wall and trying to figure it out. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Amen? With, you ever listen to art critics or people who are art connoisseurs? They go in front of these art pieces and they're like, I'm thinking the artist wanted to shut up. <laughs> He just wanted to paint. You don't look at a finger paint by a three-year-old and say, I wonder what the artist was trying to. You see how crazy that is? So religion, again, is the mangled part of the unfinished work of Christ. It tries to bring vines where there is a perfect harvest. That's the mangling. You guys know, you ever see a vine wrap around things? It tries to choke things out. A serpent is like a vine, a living vine. Tries to choke out your supernatural existence. Yes. Alright. It always feels like it has to. And we're talking about religion. Yes. It always feels like it has to do something to please God. Yes. The trickery of the enemy is to have the spirit-filled human feel as if he's spiritually empty. Yes. All the while calling himself, I'm spirit-filled. But then you come before God and say, Lord, fill me up. Why? Are you empty? Something wrong? If your spirit, he calls you spirit filled, why would you go before him and say you're empty? Yeah. You see, there's something going on here. There's a duality going on that you can't quite figure out. 
This puts man in the precarious scenario of not living in a seated position, while in actuality, he already is. You see, religion always tells you you have to seek God. How are you going to seek God when you're in Him already? Amen. Where are you going to find Him? You see, it makes no sense. Religion is just the trickery of the enemy. Trying to get you going off in a different direction so you never quite understand truth, not trying to find truth. Jesus said, you won't find the truth and the truth will make you free. He said, you will know the truth because the truth you know is the one that you are living in. If you're seeking truth, something wrong with you. Okay. I hope I'm making sense to you. Yes, you are. Some people look at you like, well, I don't know, but oops, get out now. <laughs> the elevator not broken and the stairs still there. Because I'm not looking for people to preach to. Okay, I'm just sharing with me. You guys are just a figment of my imagination. Because well, I'm not here teaching me. I'm not teaching you. If you come along for the ride, if I look in my car and I see you behind, I say, oh, let's go. Amen. Some, some preachers, they only go to church growth conferences. They're trying to grow these big churches. For what? To teach them what? The same stuff that was taught to you that was all error filled? Don't get me started. All right. I woke up with a headache. Hallelujah. And it was called religion. Amen. All right. So you get that. In actuality, you already are. In heavenly places. You're not seeking heavenly places. you got to read the gospel for what it is. The gospel didn't end with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The good news is right through everything. The greatest news you ever get is your realization that you are in heavenly places. There is no place to seek anymore. All you got to do is forsake not the assembly of the saints. Come together. Start feeding each other truth. Amen. You know what happens is when one of us goes outside the camp for a for an extended period, and then we come back and say, Oh, now you shame for come back. That's what religion does, tries to shame you into coming back. So you don't like come back because you everybody will think something. The truth, the truth. Come on. You know, if you go family party, you never see your family a long time. What do you go there for? You go for the food. You don't go for the people, you go for the food. Why do you come to church? Don't come for the people. Come for the food. All right. I'll hope you get that. All right. To receive more from God, you must do whose part? Your part. What is your part? Well, it involves walking, talking, and doing the corresponding actions of the Spirit. You do what the Spirit has already laid out for you to do. Amen? Oh, you know, you don't go seeking for people to pray for. You don't go seeking people. Oh, you know, you have enough of them showing up at the door. Everybody says, oh, Lord, give me the spirit of an evangelist. I want to go out and evangelize. Um, you got to have something they can feed from. Yes. Amen. You know that you have an abundance of people already in your life. They come to you like chickens looking for feed. What are you feeding? Sometimes evangelists, they chase people away. Like I said, don't chase the chickens. Amen. All right. Failure to change your mindset by aligning, aligning your thoughts with His Word will cause you to miss out on all that God wants to accomplish in your life. God wants to accomplish a lot through you. He just wants you to realize first who you are. Realize who you are and everything else falls into place. When you don't know who you are, somebody will try and tell you who you are. And when somebody tells you who you are, you start believing what they say you are. Many of you in here were called fat, dumb, lazy, and stupid growing up. You know, as you get older, you start believing that stuff. You know? Somebody you love will offer you rejection, and you'll take it. They'll say, what are you, stupid? And as you get older, you're like, what are my keys? What am I supposed to do today? See, you already have become stupid. Don't be stupid. Amen? Call all your faculties back to yourself, and you'll be fine. Everybody high five your name and say, you are greater then you've been called. And say, say this in addition. You are not what people have said about you your whole life. Remember, Pastor Jeff said, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. 
hopefully when these guys are up here saying, you know, I give them as much time as they want to do communion and offering. I hope that you guys are listening to the yes. words that come up. Because sometimes, like, oh, Pastor Dini said this, Pastor Jeff said this, and you're like, oh, they did? <laughs> you know that all of you are filled with wisdom and knowledge? But who's listening? Not just because I'm a tallest that you listen to me. <laughs> Everybody has a wealth of wisdom. These guys have a lot of experience with stupid people. They just are nicer about it. I call what it is. I, if it is, it is. Amen. If it's a blue car, it's a blue car. If it's a dumb preacher, guess what? It's not a blue car. I'm not saying I'm the smartest, but I'm pretty, pretty bright. And Paul. Amen. And Paul. Okay. <laughs> Ephesians 1. Everybody got your Bible out or do we have to show for you? <clears throat> yes. Ephesians 1, verse 3. You guys, you guys know this verse. I preach it all the time. Blessed be the God and Father of who? Of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Bless us with? Every spiritual blessing, where? In the heavenly places in Christ. Everybody say heavenly places. Because just one chapter later, it says that you are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. So, how I mean, you know these two things kind of run together because it says heavenly places. Wow. We're pretty smart in here. We're pretty smart because you've been blessed with what? Every spiritual blessing. You know what that means? You are a gardener forever. The paid for work of Jesus is this, that he paid for you being a farmer too. So you are in those heavenly places. You are a gardener. You know what a gardener does? He enjoys the garden. I know. You know how simple this Bible is? Don't bring your dumbness in and you're all right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You think a gardener, right? If God gave you a garden, you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to dig all this up and make my own. <laughs> Hello. What's in a garden, first of all? Well, some people put uh, flowers. flowers. Why? Because ladies like flowers. <laughs> <laughs> what do ladies like on their birthday? Mother's Day, candy, you know, must be that week of the month, all the chocolate, money, but what if you never have chocolate and money in the Garden of Eden, what are you going to say, I'm going to dig all this up and plant chocolate, well the thing is, you know, ladies like the beauty in things. Right? You ladies are so compassionate, right? I know one thing. Don't mess with a lady. <coughs> because once you show yourself not to be beautiful, they step on you. <coughs> crush you, throw you in a fire, and burn you up. <laughs> oh wait, that's just local ladies. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, but if you have a garden, you may... All you have to do is tend the garden. You don't have to plant and do anything else. Maybe you gotta do a little pruning here and there, weeding. Oh, you know, but here's the garden of, of God. The garden of Eden had no weeds. Amen. Oh, wow. Yeah. Had no weeds. Amen. It had nothing to prune back or trim or cut because that would involve waste. In God, there's no waste. That's right. There is no rubbish, so to speak. Amen. <coughs> So all you got to do is do what you do. Enjoy the fruit. Enjoy the beauty. Here's the thing. Once they got pushed out of the garden because of God's mercy, I mean, you know that now they got to go do their own garden. And what they find, it, it's almost impossible to duplicate what they had. So this is God. He will see to it that later on he meets them on the other side of the flame. And then he brings the flame on top of them. So they're one again. And now this flame of fire, remember this. That flame of fire that the angel held at the garden's entrance, I mean, you know, that flame, hallelujah, is protection. Now, 
because in, the, in Acts 2, that flame comes upon them so that the enemy can never, ever touch God's people ever again without being burnt up. But what do we do? Pull ourselves out of the flame. Amen? Or think ourselves out of the flame. So God's mercy now is that these, this flame of fire now that is sitting upon each and every one of us leaves no room for you to blame anybody else, not even the devil. But what are Christians very good at? Blaming, blaming. blaming everybody else. And when they can't find a human to blame, then they blame the devil. But the trickery is, it wasn't the devil because the devil is like, oh my God, only get one of me. How come when they run out of people, they blame me? Put yourself in the devil's place. Would you want to be blamed for everything on this planet? See, but that's what Christians do. We, we run out of people to blame. We blame the devil. And the devil is like, I'm locked up in hell. What the heck is going on? Remember, I preached that too. If Jesus went and took back the keys of hell and death, he probably locked the door on his way out. Because no sense all of you having house keys on your key ring if you leave your house unlocked. You see how quiet it gets? That's when I smell smoke in there. <laughs> Put oil. So the flames, the flames are very important. Amen. Because what it does is it sits on you now. The enemy has no part in you. Everybody say amen. amen. So thereby, if the enemy has no part in you, how do you know that you can't even blame the enemy? Why? Because he can't touch you. Amen. He can't touch you. The only thing he can get to, and I've said this for years, that the devil cannot read your mind. Demon spirits cannot read your mind. They read your actions and listen to your words. That's it. That's the only thing they can do. So if you're going to play the blame game, well, you know, they, they got you. Why? Because all they do is throwing. You, get, you see these cord bonds outside? If I go, I don't care. These fish have a certain kind of diet. But if I go out there and throw confetti, <laughs> guess what they're going to do? They're going to eat confetti that day. Because they don't care. They'll feed off of anything. How do you know that? People of God feed off of anything. We'll eat anything. We'll take any theology. If we think the guy on TV is saying something, we believe that that's the truth. I mean, no, don't believe anybody. Believe that Jesus is in you. Amen? He's, he is the living bread. Amen? So I mean, no, that, why would you try to eat one lot of bread? How many of you have a favorite kind of bread? Yeah? Yeah. When you go to the store, you look, if you want white, how many like white or wheat? Come on. What do you like? Wheat? wheat. Healthy. You think you're healthy. How many of you like white? white. I like white. I like oh, white. that's you're unhealthy. No, white is oh, clean to me. Anyway. <laughs> you know what I don't like when you make a grilled cheese with wheat bread? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I look at that like. Especially grainy one. Oh, that's, that's not right. Something wrong. <laughs> Why? Because he always looked burnt. <laughs> and it always looks more oily than the white one, right? No. I used to do this with my kids. I used to put the cheese down on the pan, then butter the bread, put that on the cheese, put the cheese inside, butter the other side, put that, and put the cheese on the outside. Triple cheese. Fry the cheese on the outside as well as the melted one on the inside. And some of you look at me like, Bro, you don't know what heaven is like? <laughs> you see your life is a living hell because you don't know. Anyway. Try that one day and see what you get. When I, I've seen this a lot now. People are making pizzas on a griddle or a pan, putting only cheese with no bread, putting the stuff on top, and then sticking it in the oven once the cheese gets crispy. Oh, you know, that's the best thing in the world. Yum, yum, give me some. Huh? Some of you getting hungry. Because yeah. you're not paying attention to this, I'm going to talk about food. And then we come back to the word once I get you back. So, 
How many know that there are so many ways to do things, but everybody has their own personal preference and choice? How do you like to receive the word? Do you like it when it's lecturing and screaming in your face? Or do you like it when it's talk story and you laughing at it? You guys are local people all the way. Because I never met a local person that likes to be yelled at. Because local people, when they get yelled at, they like fight. Amen? Amen. Remember all the times you got lectured? I'll just tell you this. All of you local, pretty much, right? You ever got yelled at by a boss? Well, while they're yelling at you, you're thinking about killing them, right? <laughs> yeah. All while not in your head. In your mind, you're calculating. Yeah. Yeah. Meet your brother and write in a pocket lot by your house. Or drive by your house. You see, it doesn't work for religion either. I find it funny that people will sit in a church and get screamed and yelled at and say amen and say preach it. But it's like saying, keep beating me up. Keep beating me up. Kick me. Scratch me. Call me trash. And then have an altar call to make you feel good later. I don't know. All I know is you can be righteous one time. You can be forgiven one time. Black churches. Hallelujah. Uh, see, I, I lecture people with humor. Yeah. How many of you like dirty licking? No. <laughs> Wave to me if you're alive. Oh, not for you, Dave. Okay. Uh, so if God is blessed, see it? Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the thing. Who? You guys see that word has? It means it already happened. Has a trickier trickery of the enemy. He likes you to think you don't have it. He, he likes to make you think because of your behavior, you don't have it. You lost it. What does that word say? He has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing. If he's blessed you with every spiritual blessing, then which ones are missing? The ones the enemy can trick you out of. That's the ones that's missing. When in reality, there's nothing missing and nothing broken. See, we talk about prosperity, and the definition of prosperity is nothing missing and nothing broken. So if he's already blessed you with every spiritual blessing, guess what, boys and girls? Nothing's missing and nothing's broken. So you already are seated in prosperity. Sealed by the flame of fire that sealed man from God, separated God from man. That same fire now seals man in God forever. Oh boy, you got quiet. Hallelujah. Okay. You can read verse 4 just as he chose us in him. When? Oh my God. So God's mercy put him outside the garden, but he already had a plan. See, God's mercy is, I'm going to send you over there for your protection because how many know that Moses could not meet with God face to face? This is your true indicator. So here's what happens. He has to put Adam and Eve outside because they can't no longer look at him in the face anymore. They can't be in his presence. Otherwise, his very creation that he created masterfully now gets burnt up. And there is no relationship True relationship always meets you in the worst, darkest place. See, whenever you think you got a bad thing going on and it's a dark place, I mean, oh, God is right there. Yes. He doesn't ever leave you nor forsake you. See, we know the scriptures, but we think he's left me and forsaken me. So we cry out like Jesus did on the cross. Oh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I mean, know that that's God's separation. He had to separate Jesus from himself. To pay the penalty so Jesus could bring us all through the veil, which the veil represents another type of flame of fire. Yes. Amen. And then the veil got ripped in half. So that means we all have access to the holy place now. And now we're all in the day of Pentecost now in Acts 2. That day has been sealed. Now everybody gets sealed with the flame of fire. I know. Take a, take a minute. Yes, take a minute. <laughs> Take a break, because what happens is we have this big yarn ball between our ears, and we try to make a sweater out of it. And then we can't do it because we don't want to stick. I think 
think about these kind of things, and uh, you know, the Lord shows me pictures like that. He says that all humans have a yarn ball, and I'm like, what? So you're a cat? The devil's a cat? What? He said, no, they're all trying to knit a blanket or a sweater using their hands. He said, the two sticks were my cross. What? Wow. <laughs> wow. So Jesus gave you the two sticks to go re knit your blanket so you can stay warm. Hallelujah. I don't know. That's the way he shows me things. Are you guys okay with stuff like that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell everybody. They're not here. <laughs> okay. I watch my grandma knit. Like she can talk story, not even know. <laughs> and then, oh, you know what happened to me? Before my grandma finishes the conversation, I have a blanket that can close all of you. Nice. Is that long? We can keep everybody warm. But she just going for broke. Like, I ask her, "You make mistakes." She goes, there's no mistake. It's just going to look funny. <laughs> she says, if I really don't like how it looks, then I just peel them apart because it's fun too. All I know is she has OCD. That'll be. Right? And you can do something like that for hours and hours and watch TV. <laughs> and I'd like to go out the front door. <laughs> oh, we're not a young, yeah, new color. Thank you for it. See, that's what religion is, right? We're trying to knit something in our brain with this yarn ball, and it ain't happening. I don't know. How would you knit without the sticks and the hook? Exactly. No kid. Well, you can try and take it longer. It's going to be the coldest kids in the world. So, again, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him. In love. So I mean, you know that he's restored all of that. So you are already holy and without blame before him in love. Love is Jesus. We are seated in heavenly places in love. In Christ Jesus. Amen. Having predestined, this is a magical word that all these theologians, they lose sleep over. They're like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, when we were in heaven, we bought a round trip ticket to come back. You guys cool with that? I don't think anybody came to earth with the idea like, ah, 50-50, I might not make it. <laughs> Why would you even come if it's 50-50? Exactly. Right? If I said, hey, you just want a ticket to New York City, all expenses paid, but it's one way, you might come back. <laughs> or you might go there and get killed. <laughs> How many of you would take that offer? No. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Like, nah, that's so right. I'm giving to my enemy. No. <laughs> and you, you go, tell me how well the, Yeah. You see, here you are. You are the daring ones. You came to her. Amen. So, how about this? Stop whining and crying about your existence. Exactly. Start realizing who you are. You are a gardener. Remember, Jesus, right? He had to come to restore the garden. So, here's the thing Adam and Eve on the other side as farmers. I mean, you know that Jesus, Adam, Eve, God and the Holy Spirit all in the garden, fellowshipping together as gardeners, like enjoying all of this. They get put out because of mercy. Boom, now they become farmers. So you know that God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost go like, oh, myself. Now we got to go be farmers. <laughs> so what he does is, uh, okay, I mean, uh, even Jesus was predestined. All right, you going, he didn't, God didn't tell Jesus, okay, here's a part of me. You go and go in the flesh and hopefully cross over with you come back. No. He went in as a gardener, came through Mary. As he, he comes out as a gardener, goes in to marry as a farmer, as a seed, and then comes out as a gardener. Now he got to pay the penalty for the gardeners. And then when he goes into the tomb, he got to come out as a... He goes in as a farmer, got to come out as a... Come on, gardener. Gardener. Here's the thing, when Mary Magdalene comes and she sees, supposing, sees Jesus, but supposing he's a gardener, Make sense though? He restored it. Came in as a farmer, went on as a gardener. She didn't even recognize him. Why? Because gardeners look cleaner than farmers. Jesus came in to this flesh. I mean, he had to pay the penalty. Remember, he got paid, right? He paid he, everything the stripes, the blood, the wounds, all this. I mean, know that he went in unrecognizable. He comes out unrecognizable. Yeah. Amen. I mean, know that we are created from what? The dust of the earth, amen? So Jesus' dust had to be beat up and farmed. I hope you get this. He had to be farmed. You, how do you dig the dirt? He goes, oh, oh, me, no, you dig it with a hole, a 
shovel, a pick, hammers, whatever. How you know that all of this had to be hammered into Jesus? So he goes in. When he comes out, he's pure. Mary Magdalene doesn't even recognize him, supposing he is a or the gardener. How do you like being a gardener of the graveyard? No, thank you. Right? So even Mary wasn't thinking along those lines, right? Like, how come the how come the cemetery got a gardener? No, she doesn't think like that. She just looks and says, What have you seen my Lord? I mean no, she's talking right to Jesus. And he says, Mary my Portuguese interpretation. <laughs> Mary! Oh my God! Now she recognizes him. He restored the whole thing. Alright. All you Marys and Manuals all good. I hope you catch this. Okay? Good? You good with this? Yes. Okay. Go back to the notes. Then. The blessings of God are located where? In the Spirit. So you are now not just seated in Christ Jesus, you are seated in the Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit is the flame of fire that is coming protecting you. Now he's kept you. Amen? Because you get baptized in the Holy Ghost by being baptized and immersed in fire. Oh my God. You guys will spot that. Come on. Keep on. Keep on. God has already blessed you with all spiritual blessings. The blessing is what? An ability that comes from thank you God it is his ability on your ability his super on your natural make sense that enables you to do what you couldn't do before so what can you do well Philippians 4 says you can do <laughs> so that leaves no excuse that I don't can I'm not pastor never anoint me pastor never bless me oh there's a spiritual root to all physical manifestations. So everything going on in the physical I mean, it has its roots and origins somewhere deep inside of you. And I'll tell you this, what we found over time, the history of this ministry has always pointed out rejection and jealousy. Yeah. The biggest dilemma of all of the universe is rejection and jealousy. Because here's the thing, I've said it before, <laughs> Lucifer in heaven gets jealous of God. He gets rejected by God, comes to earth. Now he has to bring a sort of jealousy into Eve and then Adam over what they don't think they have. How many know that God created Adam to have everything? Yes. So he has an external, he has a natural thing come in, convinces him that he doesn't quite have what he already has. Oh my. And then what happens? Everything starts to unravel. The sweater becomes a yarn ball. Hallelujah. And this is how it all begins. See, we got to understand that these things are already predestined. Everything's already been wrapped up in a nice neat package for you. All you got to do is enjoy what's in the package, not the package. <laughs> See, there's an idea that the Christian life, the perfect Christian life, is this present or this package that's so beautiful. And when you come to it and you finally sit, Okay, it's my chance. Oh, too nice. I'm not like a It's like they wrapped it at Macy's. Yeah. And you're like, oh, the lady got hired to wrap the package. I'm like undo all her work. <laughs> Everybody say mental and all. <laughs> Some of you, I know some of you ladies, my grandma used to do this, I go to Mason's buy her a present, give it to her, and she was like, oh, I'm dying. And then she starts taking it apart, little by little, peeling the paper. Get to my house. <laughs> and save the paper. Yes. With the bowl still on top, save the paper. Take the box, save the box. God forbid the lady would take the paper to the box. Oh. Like, oh. You know why? Because I saw him. my grandma do this. Oh, why she would take the box to the paper? Because when you lift the tape, what happens to the paper box? Ah. Save everything and look inside. And this is what my grandma said. Oh, that's nice. Thank you.
You don't appreciate all my effort to buy you this thing. You appreciate the lady's effort to wrap the package. And that's what religion is. It looks like a pretty package, but we don't know. We don't want to know what's inside because we think it involves work. The enemy tricks us into thinking that the Christian life is full of work. But there's no works involved in the Christian life. Oh boy, so many analogies today. You guys, know, you guys' heads are so full, you're leaking. That's why he will rain plenty. Our brain is leaking. When you become or became born again, you receive the root to everything that pertains to life and godliness in this physical world. Declaring that you are blessed defeats the carnal mindset. How many of you would say you are blessed? I want you all of that, Ephesians 1, 3, to tell you you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. And finally, I got almost every hand to raise up. John 6, verse 63, Jesus' words are spirit and life. So most of you have read this verse before, I presume, right? 6 and 63, you guys see it right here at the top? No. It is the Spirit. Notice that whenever it talks or refers to the Holy Spirit, it's capitalized with a capital S, like Superman. <laughs> you don't see Superman with a lowercase s. No. I'm trying to be Superman. <laughs> How many of you like Superman, first of all? I like yeah, Superman. Why? Because that S is like. <laughs> You don't see Superman saying, I want to stop that missile, but oh, let me think. I don't know if I can handle this one. No, what is his attitude? What is Superman's attitude? Nothing can defeat him, right? Here's the thing. I just saw um, this movie about Superman, right? It, this is the newest one, Superman. And then there was these characters that came from his former planet. You guys know what you guys saw And they were fighting him. They were fighting. They were beating each other up on the earth. And I was thinking, that doesn't even make sense. Why would they even fight? They both equal. Exactly. They are fighting each other. What would happen? Who will beat up who? <laughs> you see how the movies get us to think. Oh, they're in a battle. If I remember, had the man and the lady one. They're like fighting Superman, ah, throwing each other through the the eye hop. You guys remember? <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my God, no more picking. And they were fighting, fighting, and then all of a sudden one of them walks away lit and they throw the girl, you know the girl? They put her back on the spaceship and they took off and I was thinking, that doesn't even make sense because if they all even see them, who gonna beat up? It's like that. <laughs> now what? It's like nothing. Sure? Yeah? It doesn't even make sense. But everybody's like, oh my god. Like, oh my god. That's like you being a superman or a superwoman and the devil coming and slapping your face. <laughs> what would you feel? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But when we perceive the enemy to come and affect our life, what do we feel? Oh my God, God left me for saying me. Oh my God, he left me alone to handle all this. And he did, but not like that. Amen. You know what God's kryptonite is? If God is Superman, amen, you know what his kryptonite is? Stupid people. <laughs> yes. 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 Because what is kryptonite? A rock. And most of you have been told your head is a big rock. <laughs> what do you get? Rocks for brains. Anyway, God's kryptonite is the human condition, the human mindset that does not realize who they are in him. That's God's script tonight. It is the Spirit who gives life, capital S, the flesh, prophets, nothing. 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 You, you, okay, no. that's what they need to say. No. Well, how do we pronounce it in Hawaii? Nothing. 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 Nada. Nail. Zero. Zilch. Nada. All right. The words that I speak, Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are Spirit, and they are. So you know that he's talking about he because man was vacant in the spirit, it couldn't be spirit filled yet. He's infusing them with his words. 
which are a form of the spirit being activated so that he as the number one spirit remember now the holy spirit wasn't here yet because he said i will send you another comforter so i'm going to send you a spirit just like me so he is the, the surrogate holy spirit on the scene trying to fill the big vacant void in all of humans with words because how does god create anything with words everybody say words so some people say oh pastor i got a hard time studying the word why you get a hard time studying words you use them all day long <laughs> if you don't like what's happening in your life check your words True. Amen? because your words how many know that your words frame out your whole life yeah. your words frame out your whole life here's the thing uh, we got to realize that our words are either operating in humility or pride at any given moment. Everybody say humility or pride. Because your pride calls people on this stuff. Humility always says, this is what I have, this is what I speak. See, pride always tries to judge other people. Oh, I know more because of them. I cannot be blessed because of my father. I'm not letting it because my friend stole my husband. You see, that's a form of neglected crime. You, you're trying to defer things to something else instead of saying, how did I lose my husband? Mm, neglect. <laughs> you heard it live. Live. Uh, ladies, stop using your body as a reward. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry, honey. Amen. <laughs> Dangling carrots. <laughs> Among other things as you get older that are dangling. That's after the I do. Now she don't. Mangling and dangling. I mean, you look all a lovey dog. Just act like it's all that. It is all that. It is all that. You heard it? It's all that. You men looking at that and say, I never married that. Yes, you did. It was hidden. It was in behind the veil. Now they're wearing the veil. Anyway, you get the bonus package. You get life and life more abundantly. I just had a lady up in White Hills a few days ago. Bones. I went to bless her house. She told me, Pastor, can you bless all these clothes? They don't fit. <laughs> I said, I cannot bless the clothes. I can bless you. And she goes, oh, man. And you know what? She came to the conclusion, to get back in those clothes involves a lot of work. Awesome. Get rid of the clothes. There you go. <laughs> And she said, oh, I said, here's the thing, sister, those clothes are out of date. Yeah. They'll come back around. Why would you wear them? They'll come back around in a while. This lady had a lot, a lot of clothes. I thought, how did you accumulate? She had a walk-in closet, and she had clothes outside the walk-in closet. And then she had another room with all her clothes, and she was single. I said, oh. I said, don't tell me. This was plenty of gifts from all the dudes. She goes, how you know? The woman at the well, I said, you had five husbands. And she said, oh my God. How you know I was married five times? Because I can look at this in chronological order. There you go. 60s, 70s. 80s, 90s, 2000, and now you buy yourself. You buy. Look at how much you bought yourself. <laughs> All dresses that are flowing. I said because you got to cover up, can't you? Drape it. Drape it. Draperies. Anyway. Because you're going to buy for herself, she's just going to cover everything. I said, go back in chronological order chronological now. If you don't like this or not, let's lose a little. Go back to the 2000s. 
Lose a little more to the 90s. Lose a little more to the... Otherwise, get rid of all of them and buy plenty of draperies. And you're all right. See, everybody has a solution. A lot of people don't like to give a solution for their problem. Why? Because this blame, we like blaming. So we don't like the solution to our problem because we love to blame people in pride. Am I right or am I wrong? Just call it what it is. Even if you don't agree, just bite your bottom lip. There's no fun unless there's somebody to blame because it deflects off of yourself. Amen. Amen. You guys all good? Hallelujah. You know that there's a lot of yards in Hilo, especially down towards the beach area. They have five or more cars in the yard that never run in chronological order. And what they was going to do with those cars? In, in this head, they think that one day, They can even find the pimples. All the key. Yes. Oh, yes. Hello. Amen. They get the dog inside the car. That's the dog's dog house. <laughs> you know the dog drives that car longer than you? Without even moving. <laughs> oh, I'm not picking on anybody. If that's your yard, I'm sorry. <laughs> All the pork rock, amen. Or do like everybody else, park on the road or something. Or <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, big AV on top and walk over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody has these things going on here. I don't know that that could be clothes, that could be cards, it could be thoughts. True. Amen. Here's a good one. How many of you have a laundry list of people that have hurt you in your life? In your head, resting right there. Huh? This is not your bucket list. This is your murder, death, kill list. I know one thing. I talked to this old man a few weeks ago, and he told me, oh, plenty of people dying nowadays. I was like, yeah, every day, every morning. Yeah. And I said, he said, every day I read the obituaries. I said, what you looking for? He goes, all the guys are not like. <laughs> oh Whoa. Whoa. For real, right? He said, yeah, every day I check. And you know what? Every few months, somebody I don't like. I said, you know what? Uncle. I told him, uncle. You know what? Other people looking at the obituary waiting for your name. Sure. That's right. <laughs> He goes, hey, don't make love, eh? I thought, just as much as you saw, you go, read. That's right. I said, people looking for you die too. How many people you have irritated in this life? He goes, I try to live my life for a good life. Mm. Try, try. I try. Mm, try. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> this guy dates all the old ladies. Especially if he learned to get big social security. That's his girlfriend. That <laughs> I said, that's why you read the obituaries. He's looking for all the ladies that the husband just said, Mark, yeah? I know the tricks. He's like, it make me the kind of I thought, that's you, huh? I thought, who are you dating right now? He goes, oh, get three. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Mr. Casanova. <laughs> He said, oh, yeah, get one day. I said, and what? Her husband went die. How you know? Oh. <laughs> what kind of guy are you? You know everything. Oh, you know that prophecy is common sense. Right? Exactly. Okay. That's what he knows. For. Always at Cafe 100 in the back corner. That's, his, that's fine dining to him. <laughs> oh, he's driving way in the corner behind the plants. You know, we get the table with all the chairs, not the bench. They're all hiding back there. That's where all the single squad in Hilo. For the 80 and above crowd. Yeah. <laughs> the lonely guy sitting in the front of the corner. Oh my God, you guys don't pay attention yet? Yeah? I'm telling all the secrets, okay? Hallelujah! Don't be like that, okay? All right, you guys good at that? All right, back to the notes. 
Jesus' words are spirit and life. The spirit of God quickens or gives life to the things you desire from God. Walking in the spirit is what? Sin. Walking Amen. in agreement with the word, which makes you spiritual. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I've got to study the word. No, no, no. Capital W. Word. That's Jesus. So what do you got to do? Walk in agreement with Jesus. Jesus. You guys know what Jesus is? The finished work? You know what the finished work is? And you don't have to work. All you got to do is speak and enjoy. Okay? When you walk in the Spirit, you are on the path of life and experience supernatural results. When you walk in the Spirit, Satan has no access to you. Simple. Because the Spirit is the fire. He can't get to the fire. The moth cannot come to the flame. He can be attracted to it. But he can't go in because what would happen to him? Oh, I like your pigeon. You burn him up. <laughs> the only way to conquer the flesh is by walking in the spirit. And that's Galatians 5, 16, and 19. Oh, you can read all of it. That's fine. Amen. I say then, Paul writes, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Now remember, we replaced the word flesh earlier with which word? Religion. Religion. Can you do that here? Yeah, of course you can. So we can read it with fresh eyes, right? You will not fulfill the lust of religion. Because religion, we said earlier, always looks out for self. self. That's what lust always does. Religion and lust always work hand in hand. Lust is not only sex. Lust is a desire to fulfill your own personal will and cravings for whatever it is. Some of you ladies love chocolate. Mm. Yeah. If I was up here eating one Hershey bar, some of you ladies would be like, no, I'm just mm. You wouldn't be like, no, mm. you'd be like, you'd have to like eat that and go eat. Okay. For religion lusts against the spirit and the spirit against religion. You can say it like that. And these are contrary to one another so that you don't do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not. Why would we replace the, the flesh with religion? Because religion and the law are they're one. They're one. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The law of what? Sin and death. The law of sin and death is what brought in religion. Okay, now the works of the flesh or the works of religion are evident, which are adultery, fornication. See, we always look at these things like they're sexual. Let's look at it with fresh eyes. If it's religion, the works of religion are evident. I mean, no, adultery. What is adultery? It's partaking of something which you're not supposed to. Religion does this. It likes you to mix life and death. Uh, I hope you get my kind of the way I, I think of the lines I think of. It's cheating. Adultery is cheating on God with a lesser thought than what you already enjoy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Love the one you with, guys. <laughs> Lewdness, uncleanness, fornication. These are all cheating, guys. It's like you're cheating on God. And you know how you're cheating? You are reactivating the mindset of Adam at the problem. That's cheating. You're living in God, but sleeping with the enemy. I don't know. You guys are quiet, so I must be onto something. <laughs> must be onto something. Right? Yeah. Because look, it talks about if we're looking at all sexual things, why would it say outbursts of wrath? Ah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you sleep with somebody and scream in the other day at the same time. <laughs> Selfish ambitions. Why would we be talking about selfish ambitions? Yeah. Yeah. About dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like. I mean, you know, all of these things are religious aspects and components. 
You see, you always gotta look at the word and say, what is it? This extra here that isn't really evident. Because how many you know that if you're gonna be a detective, you gotta look for evidence. You cannot convict somebody without evidence. Good, solid, hard evidence. You can't. So, I mean, Paul is telling you all of these things. If you look all the way down here, 21, way down. And on the like, you see it? Just as, as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, how many know that religious people like to say the kingdom of God? You're not going to heaven if you do these things. I don't know what school you went, but kingdom is lowercase. You guys see? That's not a place. It's an attitude. It's a way of life. It's a way of living. So it's not a place. It's not heaven. So the way religion reads is like all sexual kind of things. Sin, sin, sin. If you, if you do all of these things and those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom, they, they take it to mean they're not going to heaven. But it's not talking about heaven. It's you will not inherit the kingdom of God. It means that you will not walk in the way God walks in things right here on earth. Because thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So the kingdom is not a place. It's the way you do stuff. I hope you catch this because religion likes to trick you. Oh, you may not even listen to me. The kingdom of God is the way God does things. His kingdom came. His will was done. He gave you the keys to the kingdom. How do you operate now? Non-religious. Everybody say relational. relational. Not religious. How are you going to win the loss? By being relational. You notice that if Jesus was preaching in a church, I mean, you know, he couldn't go to the strip club. But in the Bible, Jesus hung out with the hookers. Yes, he did. Hello? Right. If, if any preacher did that today, what would they say? Oh, he's sinful. Yeah. What? Well, what if that's his niece dancing and he's trying to support her? Exactly. Not exactly. in that way. He's trying to support her. Oh, God. Some of you think, you know, it rain. No, no, no. Because if you go in and say, get off the pole right now, hallelujah, they're going to just say, okay, but as soon as you leave, well, right back on. <laughs> because rebellion does stuff like yes. that. Right? How many of you were rebellious? Don't even lie. Some of you still are. Still are. In your mind, you're like, I don't know about this message. You're rebellious. <laughs> then it goes down. You guys see? You guys are cool. But the fruit of the Spirit in verse 22. Three sets of three, by the way. Three, first three attributed to God, the second three attributed to Jesus, the third three attributed to the Holy Spirit in you right now. These are things you go through. You inherited all of these things, right? The first six, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness. The last three, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control attributed to the Holy Spirit, and you got to work on that every day. Self-control being the last of the... Oh boy, the three, three sets of three, the third of the three, and all is the greatest of the three. So the third group, greatest group. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What is your biggest battle on any given day? Being faithful, being gentle, and controlling yourself. But some of you right now are a gas can and a lighter walking around. And I see uh, some guilty parties. You know? One was honest and the other one was saying, Amen. But, see, who are you trying to burn up? <laughs> yeah. I remember I had one coach one time. I used to get really angry. He used to always talk pigeon. He used to like, hey, play good. That's why I'm mad. Because I'm not playing good. I said, brain surgeon. And he thought, hey, don't get burned up, man. No get burned out. <laughs> so I'm thinking about all, thinking about these things, thinking myself in the helmet with the guy. No get burned out. You know what he's trying to tell me? Relax. Yeah. Take a pill. In fact, most of us in here got a double our dosage. <laughs> no get burned out. 
Some of you have a bad temper. I'm in a room full of people with bad tempers. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I know, because I got a bad temper. I know God can bring me all the people with bad tempers. <laughs> you know why? Because he's going to test me. He's going to irritate me, so I ain't going to lose my cool. I don't get burned out with you. <laughs> all right. You guys good now? Nine fruit of the Spirit. Where is it found? Found that away in Galatians. Five. Twenty. Two. Okay. Okay, back to the notes. We're going to finish up fast. <laughs> Shut up your head. It's raining. Where are you going? In the mall. In the mall, walk around. Okay. You all can go to the mall if you buy me something. All right? Make sure you wrap them up. Make the lady from Macy's. I promise I'm not going to tear them apart. Okay? You guys all hear when you walk in the spirit, so you know there's no access to you, obviously. The way, only way to conquer the flesh is by walking in the spirit. Simple. Fasting will not conquer the works of the flesh or wrong thinking. Okay? Walking in the flesh is a mindset that is contrary to God and His word. Now, what did we replace the word flesh with? Religion. So how many of you are getting irritated with religious people? Because a lot of you come from other churches before, yeah, you come here now, and you feel the little Sahala Vial change. How many of you like that attitude they give you? Oh. At our church, or at my church. We all local, yeah? Everybody practices say big whoops. Big whoops. Yeah, they can do whatever they like. They trick big boys. Us, we just family. I don't care how long you've been away. You're still family to me. Yeah, that's right. Okay. You come, you come. You don't come, you don't come. How huh? much right. easier is that? But if, if you don't come a long time, don't come to me and ask me for favor. That's right. Huh? Because I'm gonna be like an old Portuguese grandpa. Oh, you only come when you like something. <laughs> Isn't that how it is in your family? You don't go see your grandparents a long time? Oh, look what the mouse and the cat came together. <laughs> I know my grandpa, when he was alive, and I was and I'll go see my great grandpa. He goes, Oh, I never see you a long time. Pretty soon I date, you know. <laughs> okay. What are you trying to say? Come more often. That's right. Mm. You all good? <sighs> All right, the flesh or religion leads you away from manifestation because it only understands what it sees and feels. Right. Go into any Pentecostal church and watch how they worship. Everybody's grabbing for something. <laughs> I go to Pentecostal churches all the time. They ask me to come preach. So when I go there, I just sit in the back. I always stand in the back. They always say, no, no, we have a seat for you in front. No, no, no. Let somebody else sit there because when I go up, nobody can sit there. That's right. Said, Let somebody sit there. So I would stand there back and I observe worship because I worship. I mean, I worship. I love to worship. I just close my eyes and I ponder and I say, okay, Lord, what are you saying? And I sing. And here's the thing the Lord shows me things. Okay, what does He show me? Realities, not fallacies. Okay? This is what happens in a lot of these churches. I see people running during worship. Running. Running back and forth. Some of them are gliding. Some of them wear dresses on purpose that look like they're leaving the ground. And they just keep doing that. And I'm like, that's kind of a distraction. I was in a church in Miwok Village, California, which is near Sonora, California. I was in this church, and I think I've told this story before. Okay, so I was standing there worshiping like I always do, and this old lady who had a little bit of shakes. You know when they get the shakes, buddy? She was whipping this flag back and forth. <laughs> and at one point in the thing, I'm like, this thing kept whipping by my ear. Like, <laughs> Her shakes 
stand there, and she, it got out, it got away from her. She wrapped my whole body in the flank. <laughs> and I was over there. Oh my god! I'm in the cocoon of Jesus. <laughs> and then I was trying to unravel this thing, and the usher came and just helped me get out of here. Sorry about that. And he was on fire today. Okay. Hallelujah. The thing is, you know, if you're going to worship, worship in a fashion where you honor the Lord. Amen. Amen. All you can do, I know that some of you are new to Christianity, you stand around and you look at everybody else. And you look, you look like you're scared. Close your eyes, man. You don't need to look around. Talk to Jesus while you worship. Amen. Sing the songs, feel the words, feel the lyrics. Amen. God has a way of reaching you through worship. That's a form of ministry to you. It's a two-way worship where you worship God and He worships with you. Amen. Right? He honors you. Okay? Hallelujah. The praise is about God. The worship is to God. Amen. Amen. Everybody has their own form of worship. I don't knock anybody how they worship. Except this one couple that was running on the top of furniture. One time when I was in this church, he kept running through every row. And then he slipped on somebody's Bible. All I saw was feet. <laughs> and he was on the ground, and he know he knocked on. But she never moved. And all the ladies went over there, Hallelujah, he's in the spirit. I said, No, he's not. He's in the coma. He hit the, he hit the floor. Right. You know when you hear the ka boom, boom. And he never moved. And then I could see little bit shakes in his leg. I thought, This guy's going to die. <laughs> but they kept saying, Oh, he's in the spirit. You know, when he got up and he, he looked like a chameleon, like this guy, he rung his bell good because he was seeing and hearing stars, bells, and birds just swirling oh, off. See, don't do crazy guys. Stop running back and forth on the furniture. Would you run on the furniture in your house? Yeah. If you own it, you can, but would you? Probably not. Not unless you had too many drinks and you brought somebody home. Anyway. <laughs> you, would you let your kids run on your phone? Oh, no. oh, oh, you heard them? That's no. lake kids. No. What kind of lake kids? Dirty. Dirty. See, local. Dirty. In the mainland, no such thing as dirty lickings. No. They would get a beating. <laughs> and boy, what do we say? Lake kids. What kind of lake kids? Dirty. 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 I don't know how we pronounce the word nerd. <laughs> I don't even know why I can tell you. I said that one time in the mainland, dirty leakings, they look at me like. What's that? Like, <laughs> oh, a spanking. Oh, my goodness. No, it's not a spanking in Hawaii. What is it? Dirty leakings. Hair, eels, pinch, punch, scratch, crack, kick, step. You're bringing out the hard stuff. Yeah. All depends on the level of the behavior. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, have you ever got dirty leaking? Yeah. You got leaking, but then there's another level. I mean, you went to that other level. Because yeah. you keep on erupting. Right? Yes. And afterward, you <laughs> you don't want to get the pause. <laughs> Far from me. 
you know, religion always keeps you away from God. Don't be religious, amen. That's why they're always reaching and trying to grab God. Because they don't know where they put him. <laughs> Lord, where are you? I hear it. I hear it. Tell the truth. How many of you have been in church and you've heard people say that? Lord, visit us, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Um, where are you seated? In? So you obviously have some kind of mental disorder going on where you've misplaced Jesus. But again, again, let me repeat this for the sake of all you smart people. Where are you seated? In heavenly places already. In Christ Jesus. So if you cannot find Jesus, you are having either sometimes part-timers, maybe spiritual Alzheimer's, but you cannot find Jesus. Amen. Everyone say amen. If you agree, if you don't agree, oh well, I can help that. But they're always Pentecostal churches are all the time. I don't mean to knock it, but even the outer court churches, they're always looking for God. They always say, Lord, if it be your great pleasure, I just heard this on Christian TV, if it be your great pleasure, come and visit us today with your presence. Oh my gosh. I was thinking to myself, I deserve they lost Jesus. <laughs> They lost, they lost God. The God of the universe, the Holy Spirit, who is everywhere at the same time, they lost Him. It's like a cigarette smoker can never find his lighter. Amen? Hallelujah. Older people, I'll just say older, whatever age you deem older, you cannot find your copy. Some people cannot find their sunglasses. Or their glasses, and where is it? And they're looking all along the time. All along the time. Yeah. Okay. You guys good with that? Yeah. Alright. Back to the notes. Right. Oh, let's read for you. Oh, you can, the flesh coupled again. Okay. You, guys read that. you can choose life or you can choose death. Deuteronomy 30, 19. It's also in your bulletin today. Amen. If you have a bulletin, how many of you got one of those bulletins? It's not really a bulletin. It's just reminders of things I put in there now. Because uh, I used to put from my desk, I used to write these things or whatever, and people don't read them. So I forget it. I just don't put pictures with words. <laughs> They're like, oh my God, but I don't know. <laughs> people like memes nowadays. You know what memes? It's not meme and it's not memes. <laughs> it's pronounced memes. That's what we're doing now, okay? I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life, life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Now, this is Old Testament. The finished work of Christ tells you that he has chosen life for you, but you have to, in return, walk in and choose living. Okay, back to you know. And I know some of you are dying to go someplace. Okay. Okay, you can choose life or you can choose death. For when you have a carnal mindset, you go against your righteousness. How many know that you can only be righteous one time? Where are you seated? At the right hand of the Father. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That means you are righteous. You're not trying to be righteous. You're not looking for righteousness. You didn't lose righteousness. You are righteous. Yes, in right standing with God. And better yet, in right sitting with God. Amen. Amen. Unless you guys lost your way. Uh, right actions come from right thinking. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Hallelujah. Here it is. For as he thinks in his heart. What is he? Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. So what is it telling you? As a man thinketh, right? One of the translations says, as a man thinks, so he is. Right? So what do you think you are? Well, the good part is you don't have to think anymore. Your activated mindset has been put in proper perspective. So you just are. You exist in heavenly, heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's your reality. 
Whether you choose that or not, it's not up to me. It's up to you. Okay? So again, right actions come from right thinking. Condemnation involves the flesh. You can read Romans 8 later, verses 1 through 14. The flesh or religion does not submit to the laws of God. God has his own set of laws. What are the, the three main laws of God right now? Love, love, love. Love God, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You guys see the three commandments fulfill all the other commandments in the law of sin and death? Love God, how many of you love God? Hmm? How many of you love your neighbor? Depends who. Depends when. Depends when. Remember, you cannot love your neighbor unless you love yourself. How many of you love yourself? Sometimes. Depends which way around. Depends what time of day. Amen. Remember, you don't have any problems in this life, guys, except you ladies understand gravity better than men. Exactly. Amen. It's good. I don't know if this is a, this is a Tim Moore proverb. Eventually, everything goes south for the weekend. Exactly. <laughs> Winter meaning cold. It's a cold day. All right. The word will not work for a carnal Christian. Christian. Well, yes. What's a carnal Christian? Those that can't love themselves, they can't love their neighbor, they can't love God. Yes. You've got to go in reverse order. Religion equals thinking like the world and yet trying to live by the word. Carnal people can't do stuff. You can't. Why? Because you're all about your mindset. You're all about yourself. Religion is all about self. Every believer is responsible for setting or changing his or her own mindset. Colossians 3. Verse 1 and 2 is right here. Ha, tricks. Look, they went to the anyway. Go back. Go back to the notes one time. I put it in the notes today. Ha, <laughs> you guys. You guys see, if then you've been raised with Christ to what? To a new life. Thus sharing his resurrection from the dead. Amen. And see the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is. Seated where? The good part is that's where you live. Amen. And set your minds, there was in minds, nice. and keep them set on what is above. What is that? The higher, higher things. things, not on the things that are on yeah. the earth. Remember, on the earth doesn't mean like you're, you're living in heaven and you're looking at the earth. Hello, Portuguese. <laughs> earth meaning yourself. True. I mean, what are you created out of? Also the earth. So your body is in essence the earth. So set your things on the things above. Now, if you get your mentality and your mindset in proper perspective, how many know that your flesh has to follow? Automatic. Everybody say automatic. Right, local for sure. Alright. So you guys get that? Alright, next one here. Your thoughts must be set on things that are higher than the things of the world. Right actions, read it, won't change wrong thinking. However, right thinking will change your actions. So if you're really thinking those, you should write that down. And I don't know why it turned to 7 and 8 down yet. Alright, that's it. You guys good? Amen. Good. Alright, let's all stand. Amen. 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 Alright, hallelujah. We're going to pray one for another. Amen. Everybody cool with that? And we're going to do the Ohana fun. We do have an Ohana fun. Ohana fun pays the bills of the house. Amen. Um, we've been raising money to do the plumbing in the back um, for the children's area. Um, we've had several contributions come in. Some people have been very generous.